Welcome to the Relationship Recovery Podcast, hosted by Jessica Knight, a certified life coach who specializes in narcissistic and emotional abuse. This podcast is intended to help you identify manipulative and abusive behavior, set boundaries with yourself and others, and heal the relationship with yourself so you can learn to love in a healthy way. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a solo episode, so thank you so much for being here. As the holidays pick up and things are getting crazier across the board with schedules, with children, it is also very typical for the narcissist, for the high conflict person in your life to amp up the abuse. And a lot of us kind of walk this road a bit blind or we're like, they must just be crazy or they must just be stressed when there's patterns to a lot of this behavior. And so today I'm going to talk about a narcissist in the holiday season as it relates to children, meaning if you are divorced from a high conflict person, narcissist, an abusive person, some things that might come up if you are sharing custody with one of these people. And so The first holiday season that I ever had without my daughter was actually two years ago. Through a modification, holiday time was awarded to dad, or rather, he always had holiday time, but the wording was changed, and it just became more specific. So that meant that the specific wording meant that I wouldn't see her on Christmas. Something she didn't want, something I didn't want, something that I did try to find a halfway point so that we both saw her on Christmas, but it's not what ended up happening. And so I would say that that first year, I didn't necessarily lean into radical acceptance. I let, I was leaning into like radical processing, I think in some way of just accepting and beginning to find sweetness in my new reality. Because for the years before, her dad and I would find ways to split time The way it was worded was very pretty vague, but that's because my ex-husband worked at a place that had work was done on holidays such as Christmas Eve. So the plans could not always be the same, but this was something that we changed. And for those who are listening to this and are like, wow, she's being kind of vague. The purpose of that is to share some perspective, but also not to share details of the arrangement as it's not in my child's best interest to do that at the end of the day. So that said, speaking from my own experience, I had to lean into what would work for me. And so that meant some changes. And in this podcast today, after I talk through some patterns, I'll talk through some of the things that I did to change and that you can do too in your home and ways to make this time special. I don't know about you, but I really hate the holiday season. Just the hustle and bustle and activities and things and gifts and money and all of that, I just sort of always want to run from. I've grown to appreciate Christmas, not for like, I still will never understand why people put live trees in their homes. It's just, I don't get it. But I do appreciate the Santa Claus aspect and the time at home. I like the smell of evergreen trees and things like that. And so I have found ways to make the holidays feel like mine, which I wasn't able to do in my marriage. My ex very, very much liked and wanted Christmas to look the way he wanted it to look. And that is fine. He is entitled to his own relationship to it, but it was really hard to grow my own in the face of a lot of holiday trauma from growing up. And the expectations that come with the holiday season. And I think that now in my late thirties, I have found ways to make it feel like me or in regard to my daughter, feel like us. And I'll touch on a few of those things later on, but I just want to note that during this time, it can feel sad. It can be heavy. There can be a lot of extra things going on and the narcissist or high conflict person may also be in a spiral. But let's dive into some of those predictable patterns that you might see. And I always recommend that you take any feedback or notes that are given in these podcasts and look at your life and think about how do these things 
show up. It's going to look different for you than it looks for me. And it's going to look different for me than it looks for person number four. Like these will look different, but they may have similar threads. Take what you need, take what you want and leave the rest. I want to start by talking about visitation and parenting time challenges, because this is probably, if you're listening to this, what you came here for. So just to be clear, any schedule that deviates from quote unquote normal schedules is usually an opportunity for the narcissist to make issue of or make great chaos out of any gray areas are like grounds for abuse. And they likely will take any of the gray area and twist it to their advantage. And so some of these arrangements, pick up and drop offs might be extra contentious because the narcissist isn't in control. They might want the child for Christmas, but they don't have it. And whose fault is it? It's yours. It doesn't matter if it's a court ordered parenting plan. If they don't get what they want, it is all your fault. And that is the way that they approach these things. Not this is what is fair and that it's good for the child to have two Christmases or like they get two Thanksgivings. It's they're not happy because it's not what they want and they're not in control and they have to maintain the victim. So they're going to use the visitation, the parenting time, um, the court order drop-offs to make an issue. And so when they're out of control, they're going to try to exert that control. What they care about is exerting the control. They don't care about what it does to your child. And for the safe parent, all you care about is the stability for your child. I know that. You know that. So let's come back to that point as we go through this of if you're the person who creates the stability for your child, and I know for me, that's more important than anything in the world to me that I will continue to provide that despite anything else going on. That point kind of goes into some of the manipulation that can happen. And so most narcissists need to be in the spotlight. And if they see themselves through their child, then the child has to be in the spotlight and they manipulate situations to stay in the spotlight. So that usually looks like disrupting your plans or trying to get reactions out of you during this time. And if you are noticing that the emails have increased, I know for me, I tend to get an email every time I'm at the airport of something that's going to throw me off. Now, it's almost like clockwork sometimes, so I can manage around that or just not check. But notice what the pattern is and give yourself a break from communications. If Thanksgiving is your day with your kid, you don't have to be checking email. There's a lot of strategies that I talk to people about one-on-one about ways to manage these communications so that they don't continue to trigger you. But finding ways that you're not checking it every day, such as even making a whole new email address so all of the emails and the communications are in one place. So that's what you can focus on and you can like keep your, you know, so when you're dialed into that, you're dialed into that. When you're not, you're not can be so helpful. And it's a small thing in the grand scheme of all of these things. Let's talk about some of the financial stuff that can happen. And so there's a lot of things that can happen. And we can start with one of the obvious. If the narcissist cannot get the child the gift that they want to get them to be like, I am the best parent, financially speaking, it will, of course, be all your fault because they pay child support. So obviously, those two things go hand in hand. I'm being sarcastic. There's a few different things that can happen that's financially motivated, but it's also motivated from a place of control. So the narcissist, in many cases, will want to get them the gift, capital T-H-E. So if during the marriage, they never allowed the child to play video games, and now they're going to get them video games and they're going to get them the console. Because what other small child doesn't want that, right? Don't let this become a battle. Don't get the bigger thing. If you've been saving up to buy like the first American Girl doll and you buy the doll and they have to buy the even bigger doll, whatever, they're going to do that. But what matters more 
is this long game that you are a part of, of being consistent, being loving, and showing up for your kid. And at the end of the day, that is so much more important than this one day. The narcissist is going to try and make Christmas this big production. And so if you know that, and if you know that they're going to do this and that they they care more about hurting you than they care about showing up for the child, just be very mindful to not let yourself get into those games. Okay? Don't let yourself get into who spends more, who buys more, who does more. Buy your child what you want to if that is something that you do. You really want to be mindful of boundaries during this time. You really, really, really need to make sure that your oxygen mask is on and that if there are extras that are being asked of you, if there's more and more and more that's being asked of you, take a step back and ask yourself, is this really in my best interest? Do I want to do this? Is this actually helpful? Does this support me right now? So the way that I work with people around boundaries is that if the boundary doesn't have a way to remove you from the harm. It's not a boundary. Here's an example. Say that you have a court-ordered phone call and the parent who doesn't have the child, so let's just say the narcissist in this case, wants to call the child and they're saying they must call the child or they need to call the child or they have to talk to the child. Like they have their phone call. You might want to play nice and be like, oh, of course they can talk to them at eight and we'll talk to them again at later. I truly think and feel it's best to just stick to the plan because all of these things are just extra manipulations. If they want to show up on that day, even though it's your parenting time, everybody has different arrangements. But if we're dealing with a high conflict or narcissist, the answer is usually no. Protect your parenting time. You have no idea what's going to come your way. It's 50-50 if they show up kind or not. So hold your power. This is also a time that if they are trying to abuse you through the court system, hold your power. Make sure that when things start coming in, you don't react, but you seek legal advice. I want to turn a little bit to some of the strategies. I had to learn this lesson and I had to learn it the hard way, but I'm glad that I did. The dates that are on the calendar don't matter as much as the experiences. And so if you have Thanksgiving on Thursday, sorry, if you have Thanksgiving on Wednesday, because that's when you have your child and they go to their other parent's house that Thursday, then you have Thanksgiving Wednesday with them. Or they come home that Sunday and you have Thanksgiving with them. They are going to feel like so lucky to have two Thanksgivings. One Thanksgiving, my daughter's name is Charlotte, which you know if you've been here, but I had Charlotte's Thanksgiving. This is actually last year where she got to pick everything she wanted. And we did it that Wednesday. She came home from school. I got her when school released at noon and it was everything she loved. So we made mac and cheese. We made rice and beans. We made pizza. We made vegan chicken. We had French fries and then we had dessert. And like, it was all the stuff, like all her like best hits out of mame because that's Charlotte. And she loved it. She loved it. And I felt really good and positive for that experience and providing that experience. With Christmas, I've gone through a lot of changes with Christmas, but there are a few things that I really love to do with my kid. We always pick out like the Charlie Brown tree. And I really appreciate that. I like going and picking out the tree that nobody wants to take home. And my daughter and I have grown to like that. There was one year that I put up a big tree because I thought that's what she wanted. And I was proud of that that year. I just want to make sure that it feels authentic when we do it. This year, we've decided to get the tree that she wants, which is the Charlie Brown tree. Another thing, this kind of goes back to the date, is that Santa can come early. Santa can come late. This year, Santa's coming early. And so she's going to wake up two days before. And she believes that I wrote a letter to Santa and he's coming. And Santa is making a special trip just for her. How lucky is she? And we're going to pretend that Christmas is Saturday because the dates don't matter. What matters is that you are present with your child. The times and days that she has gone to her dad's, we've made the morning special. So it's been one so far, but we've gotten up, we've kept our pajamas on, we've snuggled, you know, we kind of do what she wants to do that day. My daughter's in PCIT 
therapy. So it's parent-child interaction therapy. And so there's a special playtime, quote unquote, as part of that. And we really lean into that of like, how can I do what she wants to do? Because that makes me feel like I'm showing up for her the best I can. You also can create new traditions. And if they have to change and if they have to be different, then they have to be different. And that's okay. My child used to really like to go to my mom's on Christmas because you walk my, well, one, my brothers are there and she loves them. But two, like when she walks down the stairs, she sees the Christmas tree. And it's like that typical Christmas morning that, you know, you read about in the books. But when we can do that, we do. We did it last year. But there are other times when we don't. And so she's grown to believe in a few different types of Christmases. And I think she likes collecting them like, oh, this year we have this and this year we have that. Last year, we had that Christmas at my mom's. And then the next day we went to Disney. So there's a lot of different ways. But I feel like the more flexible you are, the more open, the more willing, the more your child is going to be open to all these things. And they will start to tell you what they want and what they need. At four, she couldn't do that. At six, about to be seven, she can. And just remember to keep yourself a priority too. The first Christmas, I went for a run and I cried. I missed her so much. But she came home and we had a great day. A lot of us go days without seeing our kid and we have to lead into these strategies. So these days feel harder. I will be honest with you. I do not spend the holidays with my family if my child's not here. It just feels too weird. It almost feels like something big and giant is missing. And so that's a choice I've made. And you don't have to make that choice and you very well might not make that choice. But the choice that I have made is that I don't travel unless I have her. So I'm not going to go spend it with my family. I will spend the holiday that we create with her with them. That's my choice. I prefer to be alone on those days. It's hard for me. I prefer to be alone. Like I said, I have holiday trauma. Holidays don't always feel that great for me. Having a kid to celebrate and to like live the holiday through makes it easier. It makes it better. But I need to protect myself. And so if not going feels best for me internally, that is the choice that I need to make. And so I invite you to make those choices too and to think about what will make you feel best and to move from that space. Not from what everyone's telling you to do because everyone will say, no, you should do this. You shouldn't be alone. Why would you do that? It's not up to them. It's up to you. If you need support, you can always follow me at Emotional Abuse Coach on Instagram. You can email me at jessica at jessicanightcoaching.com. You can find me on my website, emotionalabusecoach.com. But I am here. I understand. And I'm sorry that you're in this place. <laughs>